Hi guys, it's Ashley from Ashley's Paper Heart and today I thought we could do a little pen review, um, kind of like first impressions of some new fountain pens that I purchased this past week. So I got two new pens, they're actually in here but I do want to show the boxes. Um, I got two new pens from Monteverde and this is the first time that I've have tried this brand. I had thought about trying it before, um, but just never kind of pulled the trigger on it. I, um, their company in the U.S., I believe they're an older company. I believe they've been around for quite a while. Oops. So I got, let's see, we'll start with the one that went in this box. I already inked them up and everything. I figured you guys didn't want to sit here and watch me ink up pens. Okay. So I got this one. This is the Invincia Deluxe. Um, I really like it <laughs> to start with. I know that's like a very generic statement. So it's all black and I don't know if you can see, but it's got, it looks like carbon fiber in it. So it looks really cool when you're like moving it. I don't know if you can see the pattern. But that's all like underneath some sort of like resin coating, I believe. And this pen is really heavy. It's much heavier than I was expecting it to be. So this one actually came in this box. So I would say that this one is probably like on the lower end of high end. So I bought these both from Atlas Stationers. Stationers? I think that's the name of the company. It's the first time I purchased from them too. And let me say they shipped out really quickly. And my stuff got here super fast and yeah, I'm pretty happy with my experience as far as that. Um, so when I got this pen, I purchased it because it was on like the, the last chance sale and it was, I think, close to half off. So the price was right, especially for me wanting to try a nicer pen from them. And then look at that nib. It's got like a bluish black tone to it. So I did watch some other people's reviews before I got this. So I had some concerns. My first concern was a lot of people were saying that the nib was super scratchy. Fortunately for me, this nib writes incredibly smooth. Once I got it started, it did have a very hard start. I had to um, kind of like open it up, twist the converter down so the ink would pull down a little bit, and then it started. We'll see if it continues to have hard starts when I do a writing sample in a minute. Um, but so far, I haven't had any other issues with it. So it definitely does not have a scratchy nib. I have a medium nib, and that might be a contributing factor of it. So it does write like, like a medium nib. It's pretty thick. So the way that this thing comes apart is you twist this off, and it is like really in there. And then there's the converter on the inside. Now something that I've never had in any of my other fountain pens, I don't believe, is that this converter actually twists into the body of the pen. Most converters that I've used prior, just like it's pressure held in there, so you like pop it in and it's held by pressure. And this one actually twists, which to me is awesome because it means that you're not going to have to worry about the converter like slipping out. Like I have some issues with some of the um, the Coeco pens that I have. The converters never want to like fit up into the pen body so I don't I don't know. This though this is nice and like I said it's heavy. You can't post it because it literally just will not stay on there. Plus it would be so unbalanced I don't think I could write with it. So to me, it's pretty comfortable to write with. It is on the heavier side. It does have like a very like metal weight to it, I guess. If I'm not the best at explaining. So anyway, it came in this really pretty green box. So this is like a hardcore, like it's nice. And usually when you buy a little bit like higher end pens, I'd say things that are like over the $100 mark um, and up. Obviously, pens can get way more expensive than $100. Um, you tend to get a nicer box and I tend to like keep the box just I don't know just in case so it came with like the refill instructions and how to use the converter um funny thing is when I saw this on the back 
they are actually in Canoga Park, which is really close to where I live. So I'm just like, I guess that might be their headquarters. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like their headquarters. So that's interesting. They're literally really close. They're in the valley, I guess. And it also came with two of these short, um, gosh, ink cartridges. So a blue and a black. I typically don't use these. I may end up giving these to a friend. I just, I never really use reach for cartridges. I always like to use converters and fill up my own. So let's get to the other one and then we can try um, just a really short writing samples. So this was the whole catalyst of the purchase. So this is another Monteverde and this one is the, let me see, the Monza ID fountain pen. So this one has a flex nib and flex nibs typically are not cheap, like pens with flex nibs. And so I really wanted to try it out because this pen was under $30 and I can probably tell you a few reasons why it was so cheap. So one, the body of the pen does feel very cheap and plasticky, which isn't a problem because honestly it's the nib that really matters. But if you like like a heavier weight of a pen, this is not it. This pen is not a weighty pen. It's really light and the plastic does feel like cheap. So just to let you know, it does post nicely and it does have a converter in it. like that. And then the feed where the pen, like where the ink goes down, the pen is clear, which is interesting because I I don't think I've seen like a clear feed. Usually the feeds are all like black plastic. This one's clear. And then you have your flex nib. So for this one specifically, the box came with a lot of stuff, which I was kind of like surprised because of the price point. So this box is very like reminiscent of like a Twisby um, box with the Twisby pens come in. So it came with two vials of ink. Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't even like really name what the ink is or, but they're two full vials of ink. It did have a pipette. I put it somewhere, but I will tell you my problem with this pipette. Let me see if I can find it. Sorry. <laughs> Noisy desk. Okay, here it is. So it came with this little pipette. My problem is, is that when I put the pipette, I didn't like ink it. I wanted to test something first. So I took the converter and put the pipette right there. And this does not go down into the converter. This is too big to fit down in there. So you have to make sure that you get it like right butted up against the top of the converter. Otherwise you're gonna get ink everywhere. And to me, that does not seem like a good idea. So I use syringe to fill up mine. You could also, um, you know, fill it up the more traditional manner. And why does this thing want to go back in? Um, and, you know, dip the pen into the ink and then suck up the ink. In addition to the pipette and the two ink vials, it does come with these um, cartridges and again, it doesn't have any sort of name or anything on the ink. Um, they look to be just regular black ink cartridges and they're definitely the, I think the shorter ones. So that's what came with this one. Now I will say right off the bat, I do prefer this one over this one. And honestly, in this case too, you get what you pay for. Um, so let me bring you in a little closer and we can do a little test in the back of my weeks. So, one second. Okay, so now that we're in a little closer, let's start with the Invincia. So in this pen, I actually have um, this ink from Birmingham Pen Company, and this is Iron Girder. This ink is... I wouldn't, it's not too wet, it's not too dry, it's just, it's a really nice ink, that's all I can say. It's a smooth ink, so I thought that would be a good way to test. Something that I had heard in some other reviews of this pen that I'm a little concerned about is that the plating on the nib can chip off 
and I would be really sad if that happened. Um, this is a steel nib plated with whatever the the black coating of it is. So yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen. So let's write, uh oh, so we had a little bit of a hard start. And I'm writing bigger with this just for the fact that, as you can see, the line width is pretty, um, it's pretty thick. But it definitely like feels like a medium. So let's see. Typically, I don't write this big in my um, anything, <laughs> but as you can see, it is a very smooth writer. I do get like feedback on the paper, but it's not scratchy. It feels like a very nice, smooth feedback. Um, it does seem to keep up with, oh, I was like, it does keep up with fast. No, no, it doesn't. So let's see what reverse writing looks like. I guess reverse writing, you see it almost looks like an extra fine maybe. It definitely gets lighter. So, but yeah, it, just scribbling now. It seems to work really well. I'm not having like the scratchy issues that I saw some other reviewers have. So I honestly, I really like this pen a lot. Um, and the price on it was really good. Like I said, I think it was close to half off and that pr brought it down to under a hundred dollars, which I think for that kind of pen, the weight and all that, like fantastic deal. Oh, and I'm not sponsored. I am not nearly big enough to be sponsored by anybody. I'm sure no one knows who the heck I am. <laughs> so in the, uh, this one, I put the Yoseka stationary ink, um, in this one, they're number one. I really like this ink. This ink, I would say, leans towards a drier ink. It has really good shading. Um, so let's see how hard of a start. It looks like the, the ink is down in there and it's primed, but if it got dried out at all, it will be a hard start. So, oh, no, it's starting right on the gate. And is it, let me look, what is the name of the model number? See, I am so unprepared. Okay. And this is Yoseka Ink number one. So with a flex nib, you're supposed to be able to get, um, a variation in line weight. So just from like the normal way that I write, that doesn't really come across. So let me try to do some of these like loopy things and I will try to put more pressure when I'm on the downstroke. Oh, that didn't feel good. Now I'm having to push quite a bit hard and I don't know if that's something that, um, and then even pushing hard, like I get minimum, uh, like results. So maybe if like you were writing in cursive, I don't know. I don't want to like stab through the paper, but you are seeing that I can get a bit of a difference in the weight. I'm having to push pretty hard, but you can see a little bit of a difference, I think. Um, I'd say this isn't like the most successful flex nib unless I'm just like awful at writing with it. I'm trying to like get heavier weight. Yeah, it's just, it's okay. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not the best flex nib. I think I had another spot over here where I was kind of getting a better, um, yeah, I mean, 
I'm going to be honest, like, the pen's nice, it writes nicely. I don't think it gets, like, as much of the weight difference between, like, the lines as I would want in a flex nib, but it's fun to play with. It's a nice pen, and the color's really pretty, too. My cursive is awful. See? How awful. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, maybe it will, like, loosen up in the future. Okay, you can start to see that I got, I was a little more successful in getting a difference of line weight on the downstroke. So, again, maybe, like, with use, that this thing will kind of, like, loosen up a little bit. I don't know. First flex nib. If you know anything about flex nibs and you know how to like get them to behave better, <laughs> let me know in the comments. I would love to know. I am still, while I do have quite a few fountain pens and I am definitely a fountain pen enthusiast, I would never call myself like an expert or anything. That's absolutely not the case. So yeah, I think out of these two, this one's the definite winner for me. It's just, I don't know, this is just a really nice pen, I have to say, and I would recommend it, and if you are in the market for a pen like this, uh, I would check out Atlas Stationers, especially because they have this one on, like, their last chance clearance, so yeah, I would, I would definitely check it out, I recommend this. If you want something fun to play with, and you might be, like, more... I don't know, you know more how to use a flex nib than I do, which probably most people do. Um, this probably would be a good addition to your collection too. But yeah, I can definitely say I got a little bit of a thicker stroke on the bottom. Maybe it's the way I'm holding it, maybe, I don't know, it could be user error. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you like this video. I enjoy making this video. Um, I plan on doing some more fountain pen related content just because it's something I'm passionate about, and I hope it's something that at least, you know, at the very least interests you. So, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!